Okay, so getting started with our second practice problem, we can see this table again, and we do not want it, just like last time. So we're going to get rid of it, it's out of the way, out of mind, and we will not use it. And looking at our cipher, we can see that we have that one pattern from our second addition one, which is going to make B forcefully equaling to 1. B is always going to equal to 1 in this position. So we're going to have B equaling to 1, and we'll continue on after that. We can also see that we have to get this column equal to 10. So this is going to make F equaling to 9 or 8. Now, if it is 9, then it won't carry over and make it so that it's 1 plus 9 equaling to 10. And if, if it's 8, then we have to get it over so that it's 1 plus 10, 1 plus 9 equaling to 10. So we may not know if F is 8 or 9 yet, but we can say that O is going to be 0. Now we do have both O and 0 so that we can stay organized. I'm going to make it so that our zeros have a line through them. And instead, it's going to be O is that and theta and 0 is going to be theta. It's going to be a line through it. So we're going to have our zeros to O. So I'm going to fill that in and I'm going to continue on with our cipher. So now as I'm going through the cipher, we can also see that in this word pattern, we can have this double letter in the end, 7-7. Seven, seven. Now, the only double letter that fits in all of these letters that we have would be L. So we're going to have 7 to L. 7 right here, 7 right here. Also looking at that, we can see that 2 needs to be a vowel. So 2 can equal to E, or it can equal to I, or it can equal to A. And we have to figure out what that can be, correct? And we can also set up a few equations here if we really need to, saying that F is equal to maybe 8 or 9. And we can also see that in this column, we know that two letters can't equal to each other. So we know that R cannot equal to E, and that R plus 1 must equal to E. We know this because in every single column that has a zero in that middle part of the addition area or subtraction area, whatever it is, then, well, just for addition, then it would have to be this plus the carryover from the column ahead of it equaling to E, which is going to be plus one. So R plus one is going to equal to E. That's all we know for now. And we could test it out and we can see that E we are looking for as 2, right? And E can't be 2 because then that would make R equal to 1 and we can't have B and R equal to each other. So we know that E can't equal to 2 and now we're going to try looking for I. I equaling to 2. Now 2 plus 7 possibly R equaling, yeah, that, is, that wouldn't make sense. We would have I equaling to 2 right here. Then we would have I right here. Then we have the R equaling to 9 because we can't let it carry over since then we would get R is equal to 0. So we would have R right here. Now, this does make somewhat of sense. And we could try going on with it. But again, 9 plus 1, that's going to be 10. And we can't have E equaling the same as 0. So that would be wrong. So we're going to get rid of that. And we now know that I cannot equal to 2 because of what we just saw right there, having 9 plus 1 equaling to 10 and E equal to 0. So now we know that 2 needs to be equal to A. So I'm going to fill in the 2 to A right here, 2 to A, 2 right here, 2 right here. And now we can also see that H needs to be 5 because 5 plus 2 equals to 7. So we're going to have H in here, and so on. So H, there is no more spots for H in this area. We can try to see if we can solve for 8 or 9 now, but it doesn't look as so. Now, we could see that in this column ahead of it, that we try looking if it carried over or not, right? And if it doesn't carry over, then I would have to be 1, which it can't be, and 2, 
which it also can't be. So that means i needs to be 3 or greater. And if it is 3 or greater, then we would have that extra carryover of 1. And then we would have f equaling to 8. So now we know f is equal to 8. We can put that over there. Oh, let me get rid of my i being 3. So we know i can't be 3 as well because 3 plus 7 would make it equal to 0 or 1 possibly. So if it was 4, it also can't be 4 because if it doesn't carry over, we would end up with a 1. And if it does carry over with the 4, then it's still equal to 2. So we can't say that either. And it can't be 5 because we have 5 right here. So the only possible one it could be really would be 6. It can't be 7. It can't be 8 because we just solved for it. So it could be i equals 4. No, sorry. 6 or 9. That's what we have for now. We don't know what it could be, but we do know f is equal to 8. So I'm going to fill that in. f is 8. That would be f. And we still can't really see what these words could work out to be. So we're going to keep on going and solve through the cipher. So now that we have that, we can go back and see that r is not equal to e. And we know that r plus 1 is equal to e. And we could see somewhere else that um, it could work, like 6 can't work because we already have 6 plus 1 equaling to 7. We can't add 7 here or 8. If we had 9, then it also wouldn't work. So maybe we can go down again. It could be um, 3, r is 3, 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. And now we have e to 4 and r to 3. So sometimes you just need to check over and over again to see what values work and then go off of that. So now we have r to 3 right there and right there. And then we have e to 4 right here. And we also have i, or do we not have that yet? We don't have i yet. But we can solve for i now and we can see that this column doesn't carry over. So something plus 7 is going to equal to 13. So 6 plus 7 equals 13, getting fireball and whatever this is. And C is our only letter left. That's going to be 9. 9 plus 3, 12. Choir. Fireball choir is our answer for the second cryptorhythm. Now for this one, I used many different strategies that have that zero in that middle right there. That zero helps us make equations such as that r plus 1 is equal to 4 right here. r plus 1 is equal to e from before. So that really helps us get those two numbers right next to each other. So we had many numbers such as 7, 8, 9, 5, and 6 as well that were right next to each other. But we need to find the perfect pair that was true for this right here, this column. r plus o is equal to e. Another strategy that I like to use was using the vowel method, seeing that a constant and a vowel next to it. You have many types of different um, constants in this. Like maybe if you had R, something next to R, it wouldn't make too much sense. So maybe we could say that next to R is a vowel. So I really like using that strategy as well. Looking at vowels, that's the biggest thing. And then I would also say looking at the zero method. So next time you solve a cryptorhythm, try using those two methods for practice and see what fits you best on the real test. 